Good evening. Thank you for coming. I'm Tracy Gelbstein, the Secretary of the PTA. Um, we welcome the candidates and our audience to the PTA's annual Meet the Candidates event. The purpose for this event is to meet you, the candidates, who are seeking contested seats in Hampton as well as for our school boards. It is an opportunity for you to educate us on the issues we may be facing and get answers to our questions. And we've invited all candidates that are facing contested races this year, although some candidates um, are here tonight who are not contested but would like to speak um, to introduce themselves as well. Um, for the Hampton ballot, as well as those on um, contested seats for the Winnicott School District ballot. Our moderators tonight are four Hampton Academy eighth grade students <laughs> who will be introducing the, can the candidates to the audience and facilitating this event. They are Abinesh O'Connor at the end, Ruby Snell next to her, Peter Hyatt right here at the end here, and Felix Terracina. The format that our moderator moderators will follow tonight and that they will be introducing to you is meant to provide an unbiased forum that is informative for our voters, fair to each of the candidates up here and the school board candidates that will be coming up, and pleasant for all of us. We thank you, the candidates, for your time tonight, um, your effort in public service, and your thoughtful preparation for this evening. And we thank the voting public who's taking the time out to learn about you, the candidates, running this year. So now I'm going to hand it over to our four students and moderators. Welcome to the PTA's annual Meet the Candidate Night. Thank you for having us introduce the candidates and moderate the event for you tonight. Each candidate is given three to four minutes to introduce yourselves <coughs> and to ed educate the public on what you expect to accomplish in office or the issues you would like us to know more about. Questions will be taken directly from the audience during question and answer period after all the candidates have had an opportunity to introduce themselves. We will keep time. There will be a hold up sign when there is one minute left and when there is no time left to make it fair for each candidate. All candidates are being seated alphabetically by office. This event is being televised live on Hampton's Channel 22. For selectmen, we have Mr. J Timothy Jones, Mr. Brian Provalence, Provincial. That's fine. <laughs> Mr. James Waddell, Miss Mary Louise Wolsey. For a cemetery trustee, we have Miss Mia Paneo. For budget committee, we have Miss Sunny Kravitz, Mr. Sunny Kravitz, um, Mr. Michael Pluff, Pluff <laughs> and Mr. Brian Warburton. And then for trustee of the trust funds, we have Miss Nancy Andrew. Oh, and starting off is Mr. Timothy Jones. Wow, I get to go first. That's 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 new. Uh, <laughs> during the uh, course of my five years in the budget committee, I've tried to put into action principles of good uh, government uh, policy. Uh, some of those principles are to hold firm to the timelessly valuable principles of America's founding, and to the still older and timeless values of New England's town meeting form of government. I'm sure you kids have been taught that without a town meeting form of government in New England, we would have never had the birth of America, because that gave us the culture of self-governance. And to respect the voters' right to know and have access to all information regarding public matters, to take all action necessary to see that the will of the voters is put into action and never denied. It's important. To place the interest of the entire citizenry above those of any self-serving special interest groups. And they, they do pop up quite regularly. And to recognize by my actions that all citizens have something special of value to contribute to our town's form of self-government. In trying to adhere to these principles, I have offended every special interest group in this town, at least <laughs> at one time or another. Right, Rick? No doubt this has negatively affected my chances of winning this election. 
But if you, the citizens, want to win, if you, the citizens, want a candidate that always seeks to serve the interests of the entire citizenry, then I'm your best candidate. If the citizens wish to vote to support one or more special interest groups, then I am not your candidate. There are better choices for you than me if you want a typical politician that makes decisions primarily on how well it serves his or her interests at polling place. I ask for your vote, and in return I will tirelessly work for the best interests of all citizens. You will find my name on the bottom of the list. If you vote for me, the citizens will find themselves no longer on the bottom, but more often on the top, where the citizens rightfully belong. Thank you very much. Oh, next, my turn? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you're next, next up <laughs> is <laughs> Next up is Mr. Brian Provencial. Yeah, perfect. My name is Brian Provencial. I grew up in this town just like you guys. I went to school here. I don't have any special interest behind me except this town. I grew up here just like you did. I can almost seems like well, it doesn't seem like yesterday. It seems a while ago, but I was your age in school. <laughs> doing what you are. My interests are this town. That's the special interest is this town. The people that work in this town, your moms and dads, the people that teach in this school, they live in this town. The public works, the fire department, the police, you know, that's, that's why I'm running. I've been on the zoning board for about 11 years. I've been the chairman, vice chairman off and on for years. Um, I've learned a lot on that board. I've learned how to work to, with there's a lot of times people come in and our board does not agree one bit. Each one of us has a different opinion, but somehow we work together and we find a common goal and we try to help people. And I'm in the business of trying to help people, and that's why I'm running for selectman. I think that the town needs to be cut the politics out of it and get to running this town and taking care of this town, and that's what I'm running for. Thank you. Uh, next up we have Mr. James Waddell. Thank you. Uh, let me give you a little history about myself. I spent 36 years teaching people like you. So I spent 36 t years as a teacher, a long time, in Western Massachusetts. Uh, I've lived in Hampton for the last 10 years. I love Hampton. I grew up in Beverly, Mass, so I spent a lot of time mm. at the beach coming up here for day trips. I've been, uh, I've been a uh, state representative for one term, and I've been four years on the Board of Selectmen right now. I believe that the issues facing us are predominantly infrastructure issues right now in town. The wastewater treatment plant that we have to deal with, the sewerage issue which is being dealt with on Lafayette Road, the beautiful school is an infrastructure that's being built for you guys that I hope you, are you eighth grade or seventh? Eighth. eighth. Oh, so you're going to be gone. <laughs> I think they should switch it to high school so you guys can stay there and get advantage. Um, is part of it, I think, clean drinking water, and I think, you know, every one of the candidates here, for a selectman at least, has a record. You can go on Channel 22 and look at the videos and see how we've all reacted to, on our different boards and how we've reacted with people. So I'm a candidate for uh, selectman, and I hope to get people's votes. Thank you very much for ha holding this tonight. Okay. <laughs> Next is Mrs. Mary Louise Woodsley. Woolsey, Woody. yeah. It's like a little sheep. Wool, S E Y, right? It's a big little sheep. Um, I've served this community since 1978 as a selectman on the budget committee, charter commissions, et cetera. Uh, I want to see a board of selectmen that works together and that literally works. I don't want to see going home at 8.15 at night. I don't want to say taking, see taking Mondays off. I want to see people sitting down and working in behalf of the taxpayers of this community. But I'm going to digress a little bit here. I put my four children through the school system in Hampton. I am so proud of you. I have done my best. I've, I've been a room mother, uh, field trip monitor, lunchroom monitor, you name it. I've done it. I served two years on the uh, committee for the uh, the enhancement of the junior high, the academy. I am so proud of you. I can't imagine a better community and a better school system. We have incredible uh, school board members. 
the business administrator who checks it ev on every nickel, our superintendent. I am so proud of all of you and this marvelous school system. I'm hoping that we can get the town pulling together to run like you run and do a great job. Um, next is Ms. Uda Pineo. Hi, my name is Uda Pineo. I'm running for tr uh, trustee of the cemetery. And the reason is we all have to go there. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter who it is. We all got to go there. <laughs> I want to try to help to bring the cemetery into the 21st century, so it's online. Everybody can look up names, uncles, aunts, grandfathers, whatever. It needs to be beautified. Some of them trees up there are pine trees. As everybody knows who lives around here, pine trees are service trees. They're no good. Couple storms and you have damage. They need to get out and something different has to be put in there shrubs, small trees, or whatever, but the pine trees have to go. Third, now I, I, I'm trying to study this word. I, I'm all for starting to bring in a columbarium to the town. Columbarium is a public storage place for urns Hi. with the ashes. Yeah. As the society gets more and more mobile, Nobody sticks around anymore. People move, and nobody will take care of the graves. A wall with the plaques on and the urn in, I think, is the perfect place for a lot of people. Hmm. That's all I have to say. Next, from the Budget Committee, can we have Mr. Sonny Kravitz? Kravitz. Kravitz. Yeah. Kravitz. Uh, thank you. Yeah, obviously, the PTA spent spent a lot of time putting this together. I just, today I drove from Portsmouth along the ocean to see what's happened. You know, the good news is they've really cleaned up the state and the towns have really cleaned up the property, but the bad news <coughs> is there's another storm coming tomorrow. Let me s explain. I want to tell you how the budget committee functions. There were six members and three, six elected members and three appointed members. There's two, three people running for two seats. The, the appointed ones, one is representative for the Board of Selectmen, other is the PTA, SAU 90, and the third is a representative from the beach. We just deal with the money articles. We, the town manager t as he sets the, pro the goals, each department c comes up with a budget. They present it to the Warren article, to the Board of Selectmen. They vote, then they send all the money articles down to us. And we interview and ask questions of each department head, and we take a vote. What's happening, <coughs> with the Board of Selectmen in recent years is occasionally you get somebody elected to the board who has an agenda, a personal agenda, and it creates problems. For example, last year they gave the town manager, Fred Welch, a 10% rate increase. Jamie Sullivan, who's the deputy or the assistant town manager, he's a retired police chief. So he, by law, he's limited the amount of money he can earn. They, he, he, we're paying him 87 some odd thousand, but they gave him more life insurance, okay? Next, may we, may we have, oh, oh. I'm sorry. I, I, I wanted to talk about two items, okay, which, you know, there are many, many issues that are dealt with in the town, but I want to talk about last year, the RPC, the Rockingham Planning Commission, came before the Board of Selectmen for the project. They deal with the towns designing plant projects and then going to the state and get putting them on the Department of Transportation 10-year ten ten year plan, all right? 
they came to the Board of Select and presented a proposal to re change the Route 101 and Route 1 interchange. If you've ever been trying to maneuver there, you see the, how crazy it is. I'm sorry. Okay. I'll skip down. The other thing I want to talk about was the traffic on Exeter Road. The, the, the DOT, the Department of Transportation, is, says 11,000 cars and trucks a day on Exeter Road. It's not designed for that, okay? And then Mr. Montrone, who owns Liberty Lane, set up an HCC to, to, to turn some of his property into income cash. <coughs> he found two developers. One wanted a nursing home, another one wanted a hotel. We, the neighbors approached the planning board and asked for a subcommittee of 10 to 15 people who wanted to learn about it and wanted to express an opinion. We did. We met. We came up with a final report. We were in favor of zero. How do you, how do you want me to go? Do you want me to finish? Or? Well, <laughs> we came up with a final report which we presented. And what it said was we were fine with the nursing home, <laughs> but the hotel wanted 150 the parking spaces and they wanted to build an office building. I, the only one that was in favor of that was CNR's restaurant. <coughs> you know, then the, then the planning, you know, maybe in another 30 seconds, that's all. Then the planning board <laughs> received our report and then the technical review committee, which is part of the planning board, did a title search on the properties. They found on where they want to build a hotel there was the people that had sold it to Liberty Lane had a restriction on the deed, no hotel. What happened? Mr. Montrone moved to waive it. The Board of Selectmen went along with it. Mark Gerald went along with it. And we do appreciate you okay. taking the time to inform us about your issues. Right. Thank you. We'll move on. Just to keep it fair amongst the candidates. Yeah. The only thing I'd like to say is I'm running for re-election. <laughs> I hope you vote for me. Thank you. Okay. Next is Mr. Michael Plouf. Yep, me, Mike Plouf. I uh, grew up in Hampton, educated in Hampton, run a landscape grading business in Hampton, self-employed, and a member of the budget committee. Slide that mic a little Microphone. Slide that mic. Well, they usually can hear me. I don't think it's... They want to hear you, Mike. That's fine. <laughs> Uh, this this is a, a an important thing. The budget committee, the public has voted to support it several times. They have also voted three or four years ago to reduce the uh, at large num membership from twelve to six members. And this year we'll complete that, and so there'll be six. Six and and nine in all with the three appointed people. Um, the budget committee's job is to set the budget, listen to all the information, collect information, and try to keep a level expenditures. Some go up, some go down, some come back every year. Uh, capital improvement, road fund, has been supported for a number of years. It's a good way to put money away. Um, I don't. I don't think it's enough money, but it all helps, and it tries to level the the tax rate so that over the years you don't get the big blips up and down. And it's it's a tremendous job to try to keep all this stuff in. There's a lot of information that comes out in the last couple of months. And it's it's a real rush to get things done. Private petition Warren articles that tend to ask for a lot of money typically come in at the eleventh hour with sometimes very little backup information. 
and it's it's very hard to support or not support these things because you haven't spread it into the budget or into the overall expenditures and you end up with big spikes or projects that don't get done. Planning on the budget committee and throughout the town is very, very important. And that's why I'm running, I'm currently the vice chairman of the budget committee. I've been there a number of years and I would ask for your support again. Thank you. Next up is Brian Warburton. Thank you very much, and uh, it's great to sit with all of you folks tonight. Many of you in the audience I've known for years and here. I want to welcome the viewers on this live broadcast at home on Channel 22 and those who have come out to this beautiful town hall facility. It's hard to believe 1999 we moved in here. Uh -huh. um, yeah. It's what a great complex. Uh, my name is Brian Warburton, and I am a candidate for a seat on the Hampton Municipal Budget Committee. I've been a resident in Hampton for almost four decades. I am married to Kim Warburton, and you know I always say it, the best teacher, right, at Hampton Academy. <laughs> we have uh, two daughters, Colleen and Katie, but one of the proudest moments happened to me 15 months ago when I was called Grampy, when our new granddaughter arrived named Riley. Why am I running for budget committee? I have considerable knowledge of town government. I served three terms on the Board of Selectmen, three years of which I was chairman. I have the proven ability to communicate well, and communicate both our needs and our wants to our taxpayers. I believe in sound deliberation, to drill, to drill down on each and every issue, to ask questions, to show a cost-benefit analysis. Each and every year, we are faced, we as voters are faced with many things, as Mike alluded to, on our ballot, large expenditure items. As a budget committee member, it is my duty to prepare a budget and send it to our voters. We must analyze and make recommendations. The same goes for Warren articles. We must plan, prioritize, and be educated on what all our fellow boards are doing in Hampton. I would continue to be that voice that communicates consistent and well thought out positions on items presented before me and my fellow members. I believe in hard work and being available to my greater Hampton community. We need to look at all matters by engaging in sound intellectual discourse. Being a taxpayer as well, it is important to me that collaboratively we make the right decisions. I am a strong leader who believes in Hampton, will look out what is best for all the citizenry of our town. Our continuing budgetary considerations should address immediate issues, but we also need to develop long-range planning philosophies of infrastructure needs as one example of one major area to tackle. Knowledge is very important. And understanding how government is supposed to work is keen and vital if we are to succeed. The future is now. Let's embrace it with leaning forward leadership. I believe I exemplify and have exemplified those qualities. I look forward to working with others as a member of the Hampton Municipal Budget Committee. I would appreciate your vote on March 13th at Winnicott High School. Voting is 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. For those voting absentee, please have your ballot in to the town clerk on March 12th by 5 p.m. I want to thank again to Brandy Scott, the Hampton PTA, the great Hampton Academy students, and the Channel 22 staff that does a great job. I would appreciate your vote. I'm at the top of the ballot on the budget committee section, and I want to thank you very much. Next is for the trustee of the trust funds, which is Mrs. Nancy Andrew. <clears throat> Hello, I came here tonight, um, not with a big long speech and all this <laughs> stuff, um, just to introduce myself. Maybe some of you know me in the audience, and I know you do, and some don't. Um, I'm Nancy Andrew, I'm running for, I've been asked to run. There's two spots available for the trustee of the trust funds and I volunteered, it's a volunteer position. So I volunteered this. Um, I am a licensed financial advisor. I work with Edward Jones. My office is downtown Hampton and I also live in Hampton. I grew up in this area since 1968. I moved here and I love this town. Um, I would be honored to, to serve in this capacity uh, should I earn your trust and earn your vote. Uh, there are two positions available, three people running. None of them are here tonight. Uh, I just wanted to introduce myself and um, just make myself available 
and give back to the town that I love. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for introducing yourselves. It's very helpful for the voters to know who will be on the ballot and the issues that you'll be facing. Um, so we will open it up to a question answer um, session. We want it to not be too long. We still have the next um, portion of our event will be the school board candidates as well. So if anybody in the audience um, would like to ask a question of any of these candidates, you can come up to the podium one at a time um, and uh, ask your question if anybody has one. Okay. Seeing as there's no questions, we thank you very much for coming tonight. Thank you for having us. And we're going to take a break now. All right. Yeah. Okay, and thank you for coming um, to the PTA's annual Meet the Candidates, <coughs> excuse me, Meet the Candidates event. We just heard from the candidates that, that will be on the Hampton ballot. Um, we now have the candidates that are running for the school boards, both Winnicunit, and we do have um, a candidate running for the uh, Hampton School Board as well. The moderators tonight are four Hampton Academy eighth graders who are um, Abinesh O'Connor at the end, Ruby Snell next to her, Peter Hyatt on the end here, and Felix Terracina in the middle with the green shirt. They'll be moderating tonight. They'll be explaining the ground rules or the format that we're going to be um, using to make this um, meeting or this introduction fair among the candidates. And there will be a time li limit, which they will explain as well. Um, so thank you, and I'll let you guys take over. Um, each candidate is given three to four minutes to introduce themselves and to educate the public on what you expect to accomplish in office or the issues you would like us to know more about. Questions will be taken directly from the audience during the question and answer period after all the candidates have had an opportunity to introduce themselves. We will keep time. We will hold up a sign when there's one minute left, and when there's no time left, we will hold up a sign to make it fair for each candidate. Okay. So the candidates are um, the school board at large is Ms. Catherine Antonio, Mr. Jason Javron. Um, for budget committee, Hampton is Ms. Jennifer Blankenship, Oh, for Winnicott School Board, and um, budget committee at large for Winnicott is Mr. Max Ambrimson and Mr. Sean Brunel, and for School Board Hampton is Mr. Frank DeLuca. And starting off is Miss Catherine Antonio. Okay. Hi, my name is Catherine Antonio. Um, I'm running for re-election for the at-large position on the school board, Winnicott School Board. My first three-year term is expiring, and I hope to earn your vote again for another term. Um, it has been an honor to serve with my fellow board members. We all show up. We listen. We listen to all the stakeholders, teachers, administration, students, and parents, and then we discuss. Even though we may dis disagree on an issue, we respect one another's opinion, which has fostered a positive, productive environment. Why am I running again? I enjoy it. I like to contribute, and I feel that I can contribute a different perspective. I have an understanding of the issues that wouldn't cut it because of my kids. My son graduated last year, and my daughter is a junior. Also, my husband is a teacher there. He is the junior ROTC instructor. And um, I feel like having these kids, these people, kids, my husband and my, my kids in the school has helped me gain a unique perspective. And what can I do for the people of Hampton? I will listen to all the community concerns. I'm approachable. Um, parents come up to me at CVS, Hannaford's, sidelines of sports teams, um, and I welcome that. Um, I will bring your concerns to the attention of the board, principal, and superintendent. And I just want to say it is through community involvement and support that changes are made. Thanks belong to all of you, the community, who take the time to become informed, to get involved, and bring concerns to the board's attention. Thank you. 
Okay, next may we have Mr. Jason Janrin. Yes, thank you. Uh, I'm a lifelong resident of the town of Seabrook, uh, graduate of Winnicott High School in 1990. Now I'm showing my age. Um, I attended uh, courses at uh, Hesser College and uh, received an associate degree in criminal justice. Uh, since I left the college system, I was in the National Guard for 12 years and in the Army Reserve for four additional years. Uh, I've served on the Municipal Budget Committee for the Town of Seabrook. I've served and am currently serving on the Planning Board in the Town of Seabrook and currently am the Chairman of that Board. Uh, I also am serving my first term in the New Hampshire House representing Rockingham District 20, which is Hampton Falls in Seabrook. And actually, I just came from Concord. We were there until 6.30 this evening. Um, I, I also attended ROTC at the University of New Hampshire, and um, so I've, I've had a lot of very big experience around, around the clock, but I've never been on a school board. Um, I have some, uh, lots of experience with long-range planning and budgeting uh, with their, my experience in the budget committee in the town of Seabrook and uh, as the planning board chairman. Um, I also serve on the Rockingham Regional Planning Commission, so uh, a little bit of a roundabout. I'm trying to get into the school board position uh, because I have no students uh, at Winnicott, kind of, and I don't anticipate having any unless my grandson gets there in the next three years, and that won't happen. But uh, I do have um, a bunch of Boy Scouts. I'm the Scoutmaster of Troop 40 in Seabrook. And in the next three years, all of them will be at one of High School as students. So I'd like to support them if I could. And that's all I have. Thank you very much for holding the meeting. Okay, next for the Budget Committee in Hampton, we have Ms. Jennifer Blankenship. Hi, um, I'm actually a resident of Hampton. I've been here since 2010. I'm not a native of New Hampshire. I'm actually from Georgia, but I came up to New England to go to school because I actually believe really strongly in education and I knew I could get a great one up here. So I started college up here and I decided to stay because I felt like I was at home. Um, and I have no intention of going back. Um, but my goal to serve on the budget committee is to play a part in being a fresher face of Hampton, uh, a young face, uh, to represent the interests of Hampton students and families. Um, I think I can bring a new perspective to the budget process. Um, currently, I'm uh, an employee over at Exeter Hospital. I work in systems administration. I'm getting my master's degree right now from uh, Southern New Hampshire University. And um, I believe that education is a lifelong endeavor. I hope that you all spend the rest of your lives in education and um, just really enjoying the lifelong learning process. Uh, I like to be a part of that, and I think I can bring a lot of skills to that role. And I hope to be able to be, be a positive influence for the Winnicott High School. Uh, next we have, uh, going for the budget committee at large, we have Max Abramson. Abramson? Abramson, sorry. All right. I'm, uh, my name is Max Abramson. I vote for Max's for less taxes. Some of you remember my motto from last year. Um, I'm a graduate of Great Bay Community College. I'm also a former state representative, uh, mem former member of the House Business Caucus, and a former member of the Seabrook Budget Committee. As a state representative, I had the great opportunity to co-sponsor and work on individual disability education accounts. Um, the bill was reintroduced again this year. I'm a firm supporter of school choice and respect parents' rights to raise and educate their children as they see fit. Uh, in fact, we also managed last year to get additional funding for charter schools, about an additional $1,000 per year per student, boosting them up to $6,400 per year per student, uh, keeping them open as an option for those uh, who need that alternative. As a private citizen, I put two citizens' petitions on the Winnicunnet ballot that passed each town in our, our regional district overwhelmingly. One was meant to stop the use of public schools and public funds from being used to promote left-wing politics in our schools. The second one was intended to stop the school district from uh, forcing common core and high stakes testing onto our classrooms, respecting a teacher's right to teach their students the best way they know how. As a member of the Seabrook Budget Committee, 
uh, I was able to uh, uncover the now infamous Garland Roofing Company uh, case, which is now, the company's now under indictment and investigation by the state of California, among others for nefarious practices in installing school roofs at elevated prices without proper bidding, uh, with a false warranty, and with uh, still remaining allegations of payoffs to local officials. I believe that uh, we elect budget committees to fill a role somewhere right between finance departments and the role of school board or selectmen. When others are telling you that you can't do something, as former Governor Bill Weld used to say, you just roll up your sleeves and go do it. I absolutely do not believe that the legislature or the general court, as we call it in New Hampshire, intended for budget committees to be just an extra set of elected accountants. Indeed, if you read RSA 32 and some of the other statutes that describe our responsibilities on budget committees, we're given a strong mandate to get costs down, investigate malfeasance, and go over reports and accounts with a fine-tooth comb. In principle, though, I believe that our chief role is to take the workload of preparing budgets and going over the capital improvement plans off of the school board so that the school board can focus entirely on improving the quality of education. And I very much believe that the single most important thing that we do as a society is education. In fact, my grandmother was a retired public school teacher, school teacher for uh, 30 years. So I've uh, got quite uh, a few very strong op opinions about schooling from her. Uh, there are many people running for office and many people in our society who believe that union officials speak for the teachers, but my grandmother, who passed away last year at the age of 99, insisted that she could speak her own mind, and she spoke for herself. I have also worked union, and I can tell that the union officials don't speak for us all, um, that, that we can speak on our own. Uh, I can tell you uh, that the school district, Winnicott School District, costs $27,000 per year per student, and that special ed now costs $130,000 per year per student. The main issues that are driving up costs are insurance, not just health insurance, but things uh, like workman's comp insurance and liability insurance and other overhead costs. We spent a lot of time uh, up in uh, Concord through the House Business Caucus working on getting workman's comp insurance down and opening up health care and health insurance to free market competition. Some of that legislation passed and, and some of it didn't and some of it we've got to do more work on. But a lot of what's driving up costs, your property taxes here at the local level, is being driven by what's going on up in Concord and in Washington, D.C. I don't believe that public schools are some magical temple to be worshipped, but a place where children can go to learn how to question our old assumptions. And I would appreciate your support. Thank you very much. Okay, next can we have Mr. Sean Brunelli? Hi, my name's Sean Brunell. I'm also running for the at-large seat for the Winnicott Budget Committee. Um, I'm a little unknown, so I'm gonna take a little bit about my personal story. Uh, I live with my wife, Laurie, in Hampton Falls, New Hampshire, with our three kids, age 5, 11, and my 13-year-old will be entering Winnicunnet in relative short order. Um, I'm actively involved in the community. I spent 12 years in the Army National Guard. I am, a, I am a big, with big brothers, big sisters of New Hampshire. I am a coach in the Hampton Youth Association. I was a, a scoutmaster for PAC 377. And just like Jason, I'm involved with uh, scouting with Troop 377 out of Hampton Falls. Um, I feel it's this involvement with the kids um, across a wide spectrum of ages, particularly my scouts as well, are both in Winnicunnet as well as will be going to Winnicunnet. So I think it uh, provides me a unique perspective um, on what they expect from their peers, their mentors, and their community. Work-related, I started with Domino's Pizza when I was 18 years old as a driver. I've held every position there from driver, assistant manager, manager, supervisor, and franchisee. And together with my business partners, we currently own 35 stores in Massachusetts, New Hampshire, and Maine, including the store right here in Hampton. Um, I'm the number cruncher in our business. Our uh, business employs 500 employees. Uh, the budget for our business is roughly th double that of Winnicunnet, and I know the success and failure for number crunching, and um, if I didn't do my job, my people would be unemployed and we'd be out of business. A little bit about my personal budget committee philosophy. Um, mainly from my years in the military, I believe in strict order and a chain of command. I don't focus on what I can't control. I won't focus on what I can't control. 
I can't control whether Common Core is or is not implemented within the school system. I can't necessarily affect the cost of health care. I want to focus on the numbers at stake. It is your school board that sets the policies and the goals for the district. If you want to affect or affirm those positions, those are the seats that you need to pay attention to. It's the budget committee's role to make sure that the, uh, the budget responsibly reflects the resources and expenditures to implement those goals. We do not set salaries, we do not set staffing levels, we do not set programs or goals or policies. So with that in mind, I will ask two questions for every line item in the budget. The first is, does this help achieve the district goal? And the second is, does this fit within our policies? If the answer is no to one or both of those, I will seek further clarification. And if I'm not satisfied with that clarification, that line item or that expenditure will not make it into my budget. Any extraordinary expenditures that go above and beyond um, the budget process, uh, I promise to bring to warrant articles. Um, that ensures that due process, the due process has been done on those issues, and the people who will pay for those will get to decide whether or not those expenditures are made. In closing, I feel as though because I'm actively involved in the community and with the youth, um, I have 26 years of practical budget experience and budget and number crunching, and uh, I will respect your tax dollars on every single line item. Thank you. Okay, next for the Hampton School Board, um, we have Mr. Frank DeLuca. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> and uh, I want to thank you for moderating this uh, fine uh, staff here. Uh, my name is Frank DeLuca, and I'm one of two candidates who is running for re-election uh, to the Hampton School Board. Uh, my uh, other uh, individual is Charlotte Pepperink, and I'm she couldn't be here tonight and uh, meet you fine gentlemen. Uh, what I'd like to say is the Hampton School Board has done a number of things to benefit the kids in Hampton, as well as look at cost efficiencies to help the taxpayers of Hampton. Uh, our building project is going well and is on schedule with no current over budget situations. Uh, I also am here to discuss one particular item and that is article 3 the addition of a school resource officer uh, I would ask the people of Hampton the taxpayers and voters to seriously look at this article and vo vote uh, affirmative on that we've had too many issues in this country in the last 12 months dealing with guns too many students have lost their lives, and we don't want another situation to happen, especially in Hampton. Parkland uh, was the latest incident. At that town, you could say is similar to Hampton. You know, we're part of America, and all I would like to say is we need to seriously look at protecting our children and our school buildings and teachers. So I wish that you would look at that article and vote uh, yes on Article 3 for a second school resource officer for the town of Hampton. Thank you very much. Thank you for introducing yourselves and the issues <coughs> you um, may be dealing with should you be elected, and we appreciate knowing those. So we'll open it now to a question answer uh, session if there's any questions from the audience that has um, come today. Um, we're going to go one by one and come up to the uh, podium. <laughs> Jerry Zanoy here. Jerry Zanoy. Right. I have one question uh, in the vein of the school safety. We've had over 30 mass shootings in the, the last few years. Only five of those have been committed by people under 21. Of course, there's a political situation going on with the age at which you can buy a gun and what kind of guns can be sold, and also the mental health issue. That's being discussed at state level and federal level. But then there's the issue of the schools. And I know each school is working on security programs, so we won't go into just what you've done because we don't want to divulge that necessarily. 
And we've heard some new thoughts, like arming the teachers by President Trump himself and by more resource officers. And I'm just wondering, do you have any new thoughts about school security, given, given the fact of this latest tragedy that occurred in Parkland, and given the fact that we're probably going to have more of these school shootings? They're occurring at the rate of one every two or three months. So I'd like to hear some of your thoughts on, on that, your latest thoughts, and any novel ideas you might have. Thank you. I'll, I'll go first. I, I think it's important to know that there are six warrant articles on the, um, on the Winnicott School Board. And Article 4 has to do exactly with that issue, and it's security upgrades. And Article 4 calls for uh, to raise an appropriate the sum of $330,000 for security upgrades at Winnicott High School. Now, out of that $330,000, 264000 of it is to come from the state of New Hampshire. So there is, a, uh, compared to the whole amount, a very small um, percentage of that that will be paid by the taxpayers here. Uh, it's recommended by the school board 5 to 0 and by the budget committee 4 to 0. Um, so just I'd like to start there because the biggest thing that we can affect immediately is to make sure that Article 4 passes um, next Tuesday. Uh, I also support Article 4. Uh, most of the funding does come from the state. Um, I also did quite a bit of research on impact fees, a, a very small amount of that total $330,000 could be paid for, uh, a few thousand dollars of it through impact fees uh, collected from towns that do have an impact fee ordinance in place. Um, uh, I was asked as a state representative to start looking into this, and already at the time there had already been 70 mass killing events. 13 of them didn't even involve a firearm at all. Uh, in fact, the, around the world, the worst mass killing events have involved cars, knives, and bombs. Uh, but in the United States, nearly all of those cases follow essentially the, the same um, pattern, more than 90 percent of them. It's men, it, it's rarely boys or girls, it's men, usually in their 20s or 30s, sometimes their 40s, from fatherless homes, uh, broken backgrounds. Most are on some type of psychotropic or psychoactive drugs. Most have some kind of history of mental illness, dangerousness, had uh, prior counseling. 92% uh, of the cases were targeting gun-free zones. So we, we, did, we did very seriously take this issue up last session as, uh, as uh, legislators. We worked very, very hard on this. There, were, there are actually a lot of different issues around it. Uh, improving security at the schools is important. Um, uh, there's a, a famous book by um, Dick Marcinko, who was a commander of SEAL Team 6. Before he was commander of SEAL Team 6, he was part of a group called Red Cell, and they found that the most expensive high-tech security systems could be defeated very, very easily. And yet some of the things that, that, were, that they found on Navy bases that were needed to improve security were so simple and so easy that once they'd, once they'd had kind of worked undercover to break into Navy facilities, as soon as they made these changes, they were able to, to greatly improve uh, uh, security. So I think that we should be talking with our, our National Guardsmen, with our military personnel, uh, with our emergency responders, and, uh, you know, absolutely leave no stone unturned, think outside the box, and, uh, you know, not, not shoot down anyone's idea, no matter how far-fetched it might sound, because a lot of the things that have, that have been used in recent years to improve security at our airports and military installations and government facilities that uh, work actually cost uh, very little or cost absolutely nothing. I'd like to add one comment. Uh, we're looking at the school resource officers because they're trained to handle emergencies of such nature. Uh, I don't believe in arming teachers in this classroom. Uh, I definitely uh, look at gun-free zones if it will work in a school area. Uh, I believe that we should outlaw AR-15 assault weapons, okay, because that's where the most damage comes from. But politically, uh, we live in a world that 
uh, politics dic dictates and the NRA dictates uh, what weapons you can use. I firmly believe in the Second Amendment, though, all right, and the right to bear arms. What arms is the question. So uh, I think that we need to get a, a strong handle on uh, maintaining safety in schools. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And now I'm going to take a stab at this. There was no pun intended. Um, I, I can firmly tell you that um, I have served as an armed security officer at the Federal Building in Portsmouth. I served as an armed security officer for Reliable Security in Salem, New Hampshire, which is now a defunct company all over New England, arming and, and securing sites. I will disclose that I'm an endowment member of the National Rifle Association. Uh, I'm also in the House. Uh, the bill that was passed, which was the budget bill, the trailer bill, uh, that added this money in for the security upgrades um, was, I had, uh, you know, a little bit of conversation with that in the testimony of, on that bill. There are many things that can be done without arming teachers, without outlawing weapons. And the first thing is, students, if you see something, say something. And the administration needs to act upon that. What we saw in Florida was several reports of something's wrong, something's wrong, and it was never followed up on. Well, if I'm on the school board, believe me, it will be followed up upon. And if there's a problem student, they will be removed from the school. Uh, again, if you see something, students, say something. And it also goes back to bullying. If you see somebody being bullied, say something. Because it seems that a lot of the folks that are having these violent outbreaks and the mass shootings and the mass stabbings and all these other things and bomb scares and all those things, it's coming from the students that have been bullied. And they need to have a voice. You're their voice. And if you're the bully, you're not going to want to be on, on, in the school when, I, when I'm on the school board if you're a bully. Because I have no tolerance for bullies. Thank you. It's a very difficult issue to tackle. So thank you for educating us on your positions. Um, is there any other questions? Hi, my name is Debbie Pouliot. I'm a mom here in town. I'm also a member of the Hampton PTA. And I guess my question is not to address in any way guns in, I guess, at the Winnicott um, High School, but maybe vulnerabilities over it. Uh, WHS. For example, I went for a visit. Um, I'm a coach for the Little Warrior Cheerleaders, and I went for a visit in the gym. And I noticed that children have to come out of, no, I'm showing my age, what used to be the math wing, I'm not sure what's there now, and I have to go over to the gymnasium. That means they come outside. Um, so I guess I'm terming that as a, a vulnerability. What's being addressed for issues like that, for example? Nothing to do with guns, just vulnerabilities. That came up in uh, the last last year there was a homeland security um report and that that vulnerability came up and um it hasn't been uh it's it's a huge cost item to, what do we do to i had yeah. all access to all the kids yeah. that came from outside to no i don't that is something that the school is aware of and the hampton police department is aware of they communicate the um hampton police department and the school and um, uh, Bill McGowan, the principal, is actually meeting, I think, this month um, again with um, security experts and the police department to relook at um, certain areas that we can address right now, but also long term um, plans. But that would be a huge cost item to the town to pay for, you know, a tunnel. You know, that's. And we also have the junior ROTC building, which is on the other side of the parking lot. And they, you know, there's buildings, there's all, a bunch of different buildings. And so where do we draw the line? How much can we do? We're, we're aware of that and we are looking at it. Just do you have some policies in place? Clearly you don't want to share all of those policies, but just that you're looking at some sort of policy to put in place? There are policies that, that for, um, for security. Yeah. Yeah, there's, um, you know, the no weapons allowed on campus at all of any kind, no knives, no 
um, slingshots, nothing. Um, there is, well, of course, this article, warrant article that is going to address um, cameras inside. We're switching all to HD uh, cameras, and there's going to be a link from the school to the police department, which is a live link so that they know exactly if there's someone in the building where they are live time. Um, what else? Because it's great that the school is locked down, but if the children have to come out there. Gates. Oh, the gates, yeah. They're, um, I don't know if you've noticed that the gates are shut at the back gate by the, um, the back parking lot is locked during the days. You know, it's open in the morning and the afternoons, but uh, during the day it's closed. I'm sorry, did you have another question I missed? Well, I, I drove right up to the school, parked my car, and walked right in and had all access to the kids that were walking along. There was no nothing. Yeah. It was very yeah, easy It's access. a public property. That's yeah. the, I mean, people are I'm coming. I'm just looking out for the yeah, kids. I'm being the devil's advocate, and I'm not meaning to be difficult. I just, as a mom, I just was wondering what what was being looked at for that. That's right. We have, there is a parking lot attendant who's on campus um, all day long, every day, just monitoring the parking lots. So there is... And plus we have a, um, a, the um, police officer on campus, the um, Officer DeLuca, who is always there. Can I, uh, can I respond to that? Yes. Um, absolutely. I, uh, when I was on the Seabrook Budget Committee, um, we did um, asked the uh, school district a number of times about security issues. It, it's, it, in, in my opinion, even though we don't have an ultimate legal vote on, on that issue, I would definitely look into it um, and brainstorm for ideas to improve security and, and discuss it with uh, the school board and the, uh, the uh, school administrative units. Thank you. Thank you for your thoughtful Thank response. You and just, um, just for public notice, the Hampton Superintendent MPTA on um, this Thursday, the 8th, is doing a safety forum um, for the 630, public. 6.30, yeah. 6.30 at, at Marston, which they will be talking um, about safety um, in the Hampton School District for the schools. Um, so are there any additional questions for the school board candidates? Okay. Well, thank you again for coming tonight. Um, for all your public service and for um, thoughtfully preparing your, your introductions as well as answering our questions. We do really appreciate us being educated on the issues that you will be facing and that we all face. Um, thank you to our moderators for um, facilitating this meet and greet. It's, you've done a great job. So thank you. Thank you all the audience for coming and being part of this. <laughs>